well. So I apologize with Akmine. Uh, and uh, of course, you have your uh, 20 minutes of time starting from, uh, from, from now. So please. Uh, hello, everyone. So I share my slide. Everyone can see, right? Okay. So maybe uh, this talk is different from previous talks. Uh, uh, okay, good. Uh, so my name is Tamina. I'm a graduate student at Kansas State University. And before I started, I just uh, wanted time to organize of, uh, this first uh, workshop in mathematical and computational biology. It's a great chance for, uh, for us to uh, talk. So, uh, it's the topic is the same, I think, for anyone is about uh, infectious disease models. And as I'm just uh, like outline for this slide, uh, is uh, in this talk, uh, I'm gonna um, just briefly explain to infectious disease models the basic models that everyone knows. And I'm gonna use the optimal control approach to study them and uh, also to find out if how this. Uh, control strategies like vaccine, or maybe someone else can change it to um, like using mask or social distancing or anything else can, uh, how we can mathematically uh, explain it. It is helpful to uh, controlling the spread of disease. And as uh, so all of us, we know that the relationship between the epidemiology and mathematical modeling, uh, it helps us to find uh, a way to, uh, for fighting disease, and so there are many uh, different studies this uh, like a year, this past year. And for this talk, I'm gonna just focus on optimal control perspective. And uh, I use some numerical method to just find out if this optimal uh, control that we, or this system that we have, if this control is useful or not. So we know vaccine is useful. So just mathematically. And uh, finally, I'm gonna use uh, just, um, like a sampling method, like a global uh, sensitivity analysis, one of these methods to find out which parameters actually they are important in uh, like uh, increasing number of susceptible or infectious or uh, just using some uh, analysis to find out uh, these parameters, like the key parameters. And so as an introduction, just recently we know that we because of the fast spread of pandemic disease, this mathematical modeling is attracted many researchers and uh, there are many mathematical models that, that they developed to uh, describe this trans, the transmission of uh, disease. But I, I would say that the basic uh, for all of them are like some uh, very simple, uh, you know, that all models and they are very uh, helpful to an analysis the effect of, for, for example, we want to uh, like analysis the effect of public health interventions but for controlling a spread, a spread a spreading of disease and uh, so in mathematical point of view we have a cis biological system and we convert it to a system of uh, a mathematics system a, a theoretical framework and we can analysis using some computational methods for example and we can predict the future uh, of the system of, for example, here, our case is uh, uh, infectious disease and can I study the behavior of uh, in each individual and finding the like uh, uh, different uh, important factor for controlling uh, disease. So this is the model that we are all familiar with that. So I think everyone explained this uh, uh, different like components just very briefly is as, it's a, a three compartmental model and uh, is represent the susceptible and I infected uh, people uh, and also are removed. I assume that they are recovered or maybe they are died already. So there's some simple assumption that they assume for this model, like uh, total population is constant, rate of increase in infective is proportional to the contract uh, the, uh, between the susceptible and infective and also we assume that we have a, a constant death rate. So this is a very simple model, a SIR model that we know. And again, as everyone explained so far, so beta is a, a rate of infection, a gamma is a, gamma here is a rate of recovery, and delta is a rate. Uh, this data from R to S is immunity, rate of immunity loss. So if it is zero, means that we don't have it. 
And in the first equation, we had a minus, for example, beta i. Is how we model that this is like easily um, this uh, beta here. We subtracted actually beta i s because this beta was like rate of infection. So, and we added to the second equation, second compartment. Also, this gamma term was uh, subtracted from. Uh, like gamma I was subtracted from second equation and added to the third equation. And this is how we write the model very easy. And some, there are many different approaches to model. And there are many more compartments that we are just assuming this because the problem is going to be changed to an optimal control problem. So people, there are many people, they solve numerically and they maybe they're interested to see the effect of different parameters here, like beta, gamma, or delta to find out like this population solves like area under the curve and yeah, maybe people like, play with that and just find out. But there's also another model that we look at it today also as EIR model. So this is for some type of disease that we have a, a incubation a period, not for all of them. So uh, we have another compartment as you see an, an extra compartment E which is exposed people, people who are are infected, but they are not uh, yet infectious. So this is for, um, there are some uh, disease, infectious disease that they have a like latency or incubation period. And uh, this individual have been infected, but they are not infectious. Uh, for example, for cold, we have this latency period is zero. So, and this is the, this fourth compartmental model with this parameter that we are familiar with all of them, maybe this is new, this uh, mu time uh, N, which is a constant price of new susceptible, and mu is a constant birth rate. And these are uh, parameters that we expect, or we have a new parameter here also, latency transfer rate uh, to infectious. And this beta is just like binary uh, incidence or mass action incidence. So we have the same uh, parameter as before. And so someone can solve it, but uh, for us, we are uh, gonna look at uh, another uh, type of problem, which is optimal control uh, system. And we wanna see if, for example, for this one, only assume that we have vaccine, maybe someone can use another. So my uh, control is a uh, vaccine. So someone can use other control, like U1, U2 or other um, uh, type of like control. And here, just use some uh, math thing that we, we like mathematician they level just uh, transfer any SIR, like to X1 population of susceptible, X2 is uh, after this is population of infected, X3 is gonna be population of recovered or, uh, people who are died. So let's uh, present the model. So this is the model that I wanted to talk about it. And as you see, this uh, mi uh, minimization problem, this optimization problem, and this function I just want us to see this function j is a function of x um, and u hope. So our plan is just uh, minimizing x2, which was uh, infected uh, people infectious, and u was uh, like this uh, vaccine control that we added. And as you see, we are applying this vaccine on population of susceptible. So this term is has been added to the first equation, not to the other. So. And for this uh, system, this new system, optimal uh, control system, we have this state variable. Also, we have a join variable, lambda one, lambda two, lambda three. And then later on, we need it because we are going to talk about Hamiltonian system. So I'm assuming this uh, like uh, initial um, value for our variable for the system and these parameters also. And then as, as we know that, uh, so when we look at this optimization problem, we need to define this adjoint variable. So we have three variables, so three adjoint variables. We are gonna use an uh, Hamiltonian problem as, as is the definition of Hamiltonian uh, function can be written uh, as a function of X, which is how like susceptible or infectious or recovered people. U is a control, which is vaccine and lambda is a adjoint variable. We have three of them. so. Uh, we write this H or Hamiltonian as a function of, uh, this is our inside of the integral, of, as you remember, it was like that, plus lambda one times first equation, lambda two times second, and lambda three is third like component or equation. And we also, this A here is just a base parameter that we have in here. And uh, just someone can use this PMP or like Pontryagin maximum principle uh, to find the existence uniqueness of the solution of this 
absolute control problem, but we are going to just use some numerical method to solve this system. As you see, these are the state variable for the system. And these are like a joint variable that we have added. We write it in this form, which is just a derivative of h with respect to x. So we also we have a transfer of the condition. So all in all, in all I don't know. Uh, so we have uh, solved this system numerically. And as you see, this uh, vaccine control, we, uh, we need to uh, have something decreasing, right? So because it's a minimization problem and uh, means that this, the way that we define this control uh, problem, this uh, function, it was uh, so effective, I would say. Uh, there are many people maybe they, they are interested to see the effect of other like control and they solve the system in uh, using any numerical method that uh, which is better so this is for the SIR model that uh, and also for SIR we just use the same strategy and uh, defining this uh, function as you see minimization problem and here x3 is the population of infected so and u is uh, our control so again we are applying the first equation again like before we have this uh, for a state variable, so we have an, an extra com an compartment, as you remember, and then we need to define, first of all, the Hamiltonian problem, because we need to then define the state variable and this adjoint uh, variable and the system that we are going to solve uh, numerically and then get the uh, this new, uh, numerical uh, simulation of the system. And again, uh, we are looking for um, something and minimizing uh, the function that we had here, as you remember here, we wanna have something minimization. This is an optimal problem. So we, U is a decreasing, so we, this is what we are looking for. And uh, also, as I uh, promised, I'm gonna talk about like global sensitivity analysis, which is as all of us, we, uh, we know about. This is like a method to find out. We are gonna change all of the parameters that we have at the same time. And we are gonna see that, for example, which parameter has uh, like is most uh, like um, is going to affect the output of the system more than others. So this is the goal. So actually, we are going fi to find the most effective parameters. And this is actually global sensitivity analysis. People maybe they use there are many different methods that they, people maybe they can apply. And this is just one of the methods that I'm using uh, and showing today's LHS method. And so what is uh, this method? This is Latin hypercube sampling LHS method. And this is actually a sampling method like uh, many other this uh, global sensitivity analysis. And it requires like fewer samples compared to the some uh, like simple sampling method uh, with the same accuracy. And in this uh, method, we divide the random parameters that we have uh, like into N equal uh, probability intervals. And then we need to have a LHS metric. So N is actually here sample size, and we, it should be at least K plus uh, one. And K is the number of uh, parameters that we have in the system. We are changing at the same time, all of them. Oops, sorry. And uh, for the case that the interval for the parameters, so is, uh, uh, if it is very large, then maybe someone can use a like form. So, and then in LHS methods, so sampling is independent for each parameter and can be done by randomly selected uh, value from each probability distribution function. And also we may sample each interval once for each parameter without any replacement. So this is how it works. And finally, we get the, this LHS matrix, which is a consistent N rows and which is the number of simulation or sample size. And we have K columns corresponding to the number of parameters that we are changing. And finally, the N model simulation may be simulated finally out of this uh, LHS method using each combination of parameter values. And they represent a row of LHS metrics. So, and this is the result, just um, 10,000, I think, simulation, um, number of simulation that we had. And someone can, maybe people who are experts, and about this uh, biological parameters, like C and look at, so this, this is for different compartments for S, like for example, gamma is positively affected, like population of S or here beta is the 
for that one that which is uh, positively uh, it is affecting the output or output of the model or I for I compartment or for the R comp compartment the same also we have beta for example and also we applied for other uh, model that we had and we found uh, using this LHS or PRCC that some uh, like partial co uh, line correlation coefficient finding the most in, uh, influential parameters. So many people are using different global sensitivity analysis method. We, we just use this uh, method, maybe EFAS or there are some other very uh, perfect uh, like method to do global sensitivity analysis. So as I, I think this is the last slide. Yeah, thank you so much for your attention. And um, Happy to answer the question. So, thanks a lot uh, for your uh, interesting questions, and actually, I'm enjoying very much the diversity of topics. So, <laughs> is there uh, anybody with questions? So, I have a general question in uh, in this type of uh, this type of. So, I think the first one is: uh, Have you tried to test your model on uh, some uh, you know the data set, like for example, you know? COVID-19 in, uh, in Kansas, so. The... Yeah, actually, yeah, it was good if I tried my model, especially, yes. I did not try, I didn't. Yeah, good. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I guess that would be cool, right? Because uh, um, I think it's, it's a slightly different perspective. I know a little bit about these uh, um, adjoint methods, also for partial differential equations. I think that people in fluid dynamics uh, use it uh, quite a lot. So I think it's a very, very interesting, a very interesting uh, topic. Actually, Anybody with, different. yes. Uh, anybody with other questions? Liam, maybe? No. Okay, very good. No, not this time. <laughs> not this time. Oh, I saw you turn on the camera, so I thought, I thought you might have it. Oh, no. I just, yeah, I thought to show my. Applause. Very good, very good, yeah. very good. Okay, well, uh, that's good. Maybe for interesting time, we just uh, thank uh, Takmini again. So thanks a lot for a very interesting talk.